Hello. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a drop down menu. Firstly, we have a frame which holds everything for the drop down menu. The color of the frame is almost black. The size is 100x and 25 wine offset, you should probably use scale. In the drop down menu we have a number value which holds the current value. Then we have a local script which generates the item list with a base item, we will get to this later. Then we have a divider which divides the arrow and the display label. The background color is white, the size is 1 in offset x and 0.7 in scale y, the position is 0.8x and 0.5y in scale, the anchor point is 0.5y. Then we have a frame which holds the items. The background transparency is 1 and the position is 1x in scale and offset. The size is 1 in both scale x and y. Then we have a text button which acts as our trigger. The background transparency is 1 and the size is 1 in both scale x and y. Then we have a text label which displays a arrow. The background transparency is 1. The size is 0.2x and 0.6y in scale and minus 1x in offset. The anchor point is 1x and 0.5y. The position is 1x and 0.5y. Text scaled is on and the font is got a SSM. Then we have a text label which displays the current value. The background transparency is 1 and the size is 0.8x and 0.6y in scale. The anchor point is 0.5y. And, the position is 0.5y in scale. The font is Source Sans Pro and text scaled is on. The base item inside the local script is the same as the drop down frame. But the arrow is a dot and the frame for the items in the local script has been removed. Now, let's get to coding. Firstly, we get the tween service, and make a new tween info. Then we get the drop down menu, the label, the text button and the number value. After that we get the frame which will hold the items. We also get the base item. Then we have a value which records, if the mouse is down on the drop down menu and a value which checks, if the mouse is currently inside the drop down menu. We also save the drop down menu z and x for later. Then we have a function which, when given a color, an accent color, and rotation, tweens the color of the text, the divider, the drop down menu itself, the arrow and the rotation of the arrow. Then we have a list of items. We also have a value which checks, if the list is used or not. Now we have a function which creates the list. In the function we firstly set list used to false, and make the list frame visible. We also set the z index of the drop down menu one higher than the original z index, so the list shows above other lists. After that we destroy everything inside the list frame. Firstly, we create a new UI list layout and set the sort order to name, and set the parent to the list. Now we make a new for loop, to go through the list of items. Inside the for loop we clone the base item, and then we set the text inside the item clone to the name of the item in the list, then we set the value of the item clone to the position of the item in the list, and set the name of item clone to the position of the item in the list. Finally we parent the item clone to the list frame. Now when the mouse clicks the item, we set the value of the drop down menu to the value of the item. We make the list frame invisible. We set mouse down to false and set list used to true. We also reset the z and x of the drop down menu. We also animate the drop down menu's color to its original color. Now, we animate the text the divider and the arrow of the item clone to a different color when the mouse hovers on the item clone. And reset it when it leaves. Now when the mouse enters, or leaves the drop down menu, we firstly, set the mouse enter value to true or false, then we check, if the mouse clicked on the menu or not, and set the color accordingly. Now when the drop down menu is clicked we check, if the menu has been used or not, if it has been used then we create a new list, and we check, if the mouse is on the drop down menu, then we change the color of the drop down menu accordingly, if the list has not been used, then, the user is trying to close the menu, so we can close the menu, by making the list frame invisible, setting mouse down to true, resetting the z index of the base parent, then setting the list used to true, after that we can reset the color of the drop down menu. Finally, if the value of the drop down changes, we set the text of the drop down menu to the name of the value from the list, then we set the value to a starting value. 
Now you should have a working drop down menu, if you have any ideas let me know, and thanks for watching.